Hey everyone, welcome to this full video breakdown with me, Rob Litton from drumsaword.com. Today I'm going to show you how to play the song Throne by Bring Me the Horizon, drums by the super tight Matt Nichols. Then we go into verse one. So let's talk about this verse. This is, this is what pricked up my ears. I think this is some super tight drumming here from Matt. And when he plays it live, he's equally as tight. So th th this is some really cool bass drum patterns. And what I've got here is a note before we go into the explanation I've written here. Note, Matt improvises with the hi-hat in every verse, throwing in random extra 16th notes, playing constant 16ths later, and even moves to eighth notes, hi-hat patterns in parts as well. It's all improvised without any repeating ideas. Below is what he actually plays live though. So what I've got for you on this chart is the version he plays live and probably the simplest version to play. This is sort of the skeleton rhythm that you want to be able to play at the very least and then you can add on extra bits um, later on. And I'm going to show you the various different types of hi-hat patterns you can play and that you hear Matt play on the recording but then bear in mind that Matt doesn't do any of that live. He just keeps it really simple. He actually just plays quarter notes, as I've written on the chart here, on an open hi-hat. So that's interesting, isn't it? Because even Matt, who technically obviously is a very good drummer, he doesn't want to mess around live because it's a difficult thing to throw in those sixteenths on the hi-hat. Also very, very tiring. He just plays quarter notes. He decides that that's the thing to do live. So bear that in mind when you're playing along to this, um, this song is that don't give yourself too much of a hard time because even Matt's is playing quarter notes. Anyway, I'm gonna show you some variations. First of all though, let's learn the skeleton rhythm. Four bars, I'll, I'll go through them one by one. The first bar, and I'll play closed hi-hat, we got this pattern. One e and a, two e and a, three and four. It's a half-time drum beat with the snare drum falling on beat three of each bar. The main accented snare drum bat beat on beat three. One, a two, a three and four, and one e and a, two e and a, three and four. Boom, ba boom, ba ba. What's the tempo here? There's our first bar. The second bar, and this only happens in the first verse, by the way. This is what I'm talking about the variations. Later on, he starts to do some double-handed stuff. It could be the sample in the background. It's, it's kind of, uh, it's hard to hear exactly what he's doing, but you, I'm pretty sure he's playing some extra 16 notes. But anyway, the first time he plays it, you hear some ghost notes being thrown in. So he must be playing either the eighth note version or the quarter note version. So this is the quarter note version. One and a. One and a, very quiet snare drum ghost note on the and of beat one there. One and a, two E and, two E and, it goes straight into beat two there. One and a, two E and, three, four. 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 So we go into the third bar and we've got this bass drum pattern. One and a, two E and, three, four. One and a, two E and, three, Four, one, and a two, e, and three, four. Then the final bar, the fourth bar, 
we get one knee and a two and one knee and a two and three, a four and a one. It could be floor tom, snare drum, it doesn't really matter. Later on I use the floor tom because I'm playing double handed and this is the way my setup works. But I think he plays it on the high tom on the recording. One, a two and three, a four and a one. Let's put the four bars together now. We play it slowly. One, a two, a three, four. One and a two, e and three, four. One and a two, e and three, four. One, a two and three, a four and a one. As I speed up, I'll sort of stop counting because it gets a little bit too much to count over the top of it. And let's try it with the click. It's a lot of fun. Now before we go to the second line, because it just repeats really with a drum fill at the end, let's talk about the either hi-hat variations. The first time he plays that verse, I'm pretty sure he's playing quarter notes. Then he starts to add in some eighth notes. Very subtle sixteenth notes going on, uh, extra sixteenth notes going on as well, but let's talk about the eighth notes first. So we're just playing eighth notes, one and two and three and four and one. And this electric hi-hat, it's kind of hard uh, to make that and quiet. Because what he's doing is the same with the right symbol pattern I talked about earlier on. He's playing one and two and accenting one, two, three, and four. So the bass drum and snare drum pattern stays exactly the same. And when he's playing the eighth note version, he kind of drops out the ghost notes in the second bar because one of them will fall with the hi hat. It is possible to do it, and I'll show you an example. But um, when you're playing the eighth note version, you don't hear the ghost notes. Later on, you, you only hear those ghost notes the very first verse. I noticed. So let's put that line with eighth notes. One the uh, so we cut myself in one and four and one a two a three and four and one and a two e and three. I put the ghost note in there. Three and four and one a two and three and four and a one. Oh, that was rubbish. So you got the eighth note version as well, and finally, well. Not finally, before I go on to the final version, um, let me just show you um, those two bars being played with the eighth note version, played up to speed so you can hear it without a microphone on. That'd be a good idea. Let's just hear that. Two lines, the drum phone I'm gonna show you in a, in a second, up to speed. So the next thing is to play 16th notes on the hi-hat. This is certainly how he plays it later on in the song. I think the third verse or so, he starts to play just, it sounds like it's constant 16th. Again, it could be just the sample in the background, but there we go. This is up to you to play around with it and make your own decisions about how you want to play it. But let me just play it slowly for you. We're just coming down to the snare drum on beat three and just reading the bass drum, really. One E and a two E and a three and four and one E a two and three and four and one and a two E and three. Four, one, a two, and three, and four, and a one. That was pretty much up to speed, but here's a nice clean version of it. And then finally is improvising. And this is certainly what Matt does on the actual recording. Not, not when he plays it live, he's just keeping it simple. But on a recording, you hear all kinds of stuff going on in the background. And I didn't want to worry you guys with all those little 16th notes being played in different places. Like I said on the, on the chart here, um, it's all improvised without any repeating ideas. So I didn't see that the sense in making this lesson really difficult for, for some drummers where we're focusing on coming up to the hi-hat to play all kinds of crazy stuff. This is an advanced lesson, so the advanced drummers out there who were playing this, it's up to you guys to improvise with it. But I'm going to show you some sort of ideas. Um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just I'll play those two lines for you with some improvisation. I'm just going to sort of come up to the hi hat to play some sixteenth notes, accent some of those sixteenth notes. But what I'm trying to do, and it's important, don't let the improvisation change what 
the bass drum and snare drum are doing. That's really important. You hear on the recording that bass drum and snare drum pattern is exactly the same every time. So here's some ideas where I'm just playing some extra 16th notes on the hi-hat. That's all I'm doing really, but the bass drum and snare drum pattern stays the same. Okay, so let's go on to that second line where at the end of the line you could hear that drum for I was playing every time. 